Hello everyone, Topsy here. Last summon Yu-Gi-Oh! 101, we went ahead and covered the normal summon. It's different variations and the important nuances behind it. In today's video, we'll be covering the other half, the special summon. But with introductions out of the way, let's get started. Special summon has become one of the most integral aspects of the game, alongside being one of the most exciting parts as well. But sometimes, the sheer amount of ways one can special summon can get kind of confusing. That's why I've taken it upon myself to see if I can simplify the concept just a bit more. But before we get into the nuances, let's first define what exactly a special summon is. Essentially, all a special summon refers to is any type of summon that's not the normal summon or a flip summon. Simple enough. Of course, the mechanic does become a bit more complex the more you start dissecting it. For instance, special summons can be broken down into one of two groups, those being a special summon via card effect or the built-in special summon, more commonly referred to as the inherent summon. But before I get into covering all the differences between these two special summons, let's first establish what exactly they have in common. For starters, there's no limit to the amount of times one can special summon, unless specified by an outside card. In addition, it's important to know that the special summon does not take a player's normal summon or set. Therefore, unless specified, special summoning a high level monster will never require a tribute to bring them out. Typically, by default, whenever special summoning a monster, that monster will always be special summoned in either face up attack or face up defense position. However, there are times when a monster can be special summoned in a face down defense position. Examples of this can be seen in cards like the Shallow Graveyard, Gravekeeper Spy, and Totally Awesome. As I stated earlier, special summons can fall into one of two groups, those being special summons via card effects and inherent special summons. But what exactly do each of these terms even mean? Well, as I'm sure you can assume, the first one refers to any special summon that occurs via card effect. But that'd be a misleading way of phrasing it, since under this definition, cards like Cyber Dragon, Photon Thrasher, and Chaos Dragon Lavinier would fall under the same category. And you'd be wrong. Instead, this more refers to activated card effects that would special summon a monster. That means cards that activate via flip effect, ignition effect, click effect, or trigger effect. But also cards like Monster Reborn, Call of the Haunted, any fusion spell, or any ritual spell. As for the second type of special summon, we have the built in summon. This can be broken down into two separate subcategories summoning by condition, that would include cards from the extra deck, and by card effect that does not activate, cards like Cyber Dragon, for example. Ultimately, the big difference between the two of these is whether or not the summon starts a chain or not. But what exactly is a chain? In the simplest terms, a chain refers to the order of responses to a player's action. Allow me to give you an example. Let's say, for example, player 1 activates Regeki, chain link 1. Player 2 then activates Magic Jammer in response to the Regeki by discarding one card, that being chain link 2. Player 1 then activates 7 tools of the bandit, responding to the Magic Jammer by paying 1000 life points, that'd be chain link 3. Ultimately, that's all that's meant by a chain, it's just the order of events occurring. It's also important to know that chains always resolve backwards, so in the example given, the seven tools of the bandit would be the first card to resolve its effect. Well, knowing the difference between whether a card starts a chain or not has a lot of implications in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! One big one is, if you've ever spent any time playing Master Duel, you've probably seen this little card known as Max C, which has the effect. During either player's turn, you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard, this turn, each time your opponent special with a monster, draw one card. If you are at all familiar with Max Heat, you might have noticed that this card can't be chained to every summon. Why is that? Well, it comes down to what we covered earlier. Does the card start a chain or not? For example, let's say you're trying to special summon Cyber Dragon in two different ways. One via its own card effect, and two via a card like Monster Reborn. In the first example given, your opponent would not be able to activate the Max C until the summon of the Cyber Dragon is completed. This is because Cyber Dragon does not activate, therefore not allowing a chain to begin. However, in example 2, Monster Reborn does activate, therefore starting a chain. When the chain begins, your opponent then gets a chance to respond with their own cards, therefore being able to chain Max C to draw a card after the special summon. This is just one of the many ways chaining interacts with special summoning. It's also important to be able to tell the difference between the two types of special summons, since it could result in you winning more often. Allow me to give you an example. Steel Swarm Roach is a very powerful disease monster has an effect that negates the summon of level 5 or higher monsters. But this only negates built-in special summons and not affects the summon. Meaning that if you tried special summoning a monster via a card like Monster Reborn and your opponent tried negating it with Steel Swarm Roach, they wouldn't be allowed to do so. However, if you didn't know the difference, they would then be able to activate it illegally, therefore possibly losing you the game, just because you couldn't tell the difference. This is just one of the countless examples that I could give to explain why it's so important to be able to tell the difference. But you might be thinking, it's all green and good that you're telling me all these differences, 
But what good does it do me if I can't tell it apart by myself? Well, you're in luck, my friend, because thanks to new problem-solving cortex, being able to tell the difference between whether a monster starts a chain or not, it's simpler than ever. And here's how. When reading a monster effect that allows for the special limit of another monster, just take a look to see if you find a colon or a semicolon in the text. If you see either one of these, then the effect starts to chain, therefore allowing your opponent to respond. Prior to the implementation of problem solving card text, being able to tell the difference whether or not a card starting a chain was so much harder. But thanks to it, it's just become so much easier, therefore making the game a lot simpler for new players to learn. Lastly, I'm not going to be actually covering all the extra deck mechanics in this video, since I believe all of them are complex enough that they all deserve their own video to cover all the special nuances behind it. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And that's the end of the video. I really hope you guys learned something new or at least understand the topic a bit more. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you left a like and subscribed. But if not, let me know in the comments below. Was there something I left out or something you'd like me to cover more in depth in a later video? I'd really like to know in the comments. But with that, I've been Topsy, thank you so much for stopping by, and have a wonderful day.